Hi there Ford owners, today in your 2020 Ford Explorer, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install E-Trailer's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. It is a Class 3 2-inch by 2-inch receiver, and the only thing you're going to see here is that receiver at the back. The cross tube is going to be hidden behind the fascia. And the textured matte finish on it really matches well with the fascia's texture and color, as so it kind of just looks like this was supposed to be there from the factory. With a two inch receiver, it's gonna be great for all your accessories that you're wanting to use, as well as maybe getting some work done by hooking up a utility trailer. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer. And you can also get locking ones to protect your investment. On bottom, we have hoop style safety chain loops that have a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. This hitch offers a 600 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And 600 pounds is more than enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes. And it's also enough for the largest cargo carrier available here at eTrailer, fully loaded up to the max. You do want to keep in mind that the tongue weight is going to include anything inserted in the receiver, such as your bike rack or cargo carrier, plus any weight that's placed on it, which would be any bikes you put on that bike rack or any gear you put in your cargo carrier. And it also offers a 6,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much it can pull behind it. And 6,000 pounds is quite a bit. There's a lot of things you could do with that. Um, if you have a small camper, should be fine with a, a smaller one. Uh, Pop-up camper should be no problem. There's a pretty good variety of boats of kind of a moderate to smaller size that you'd be able to pull with this as well. So if you've got a utility trailer, you could also use this for hooking up uh, and getting a little bit of work done. Maybe you've got a couple of mowers you go around and do some work with or just helping out a family member. And I've got some measurements here to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, we're right at about four and a half inches. And that's important when determining if your accessories can be placed in the receiver without contacting the bumper, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're right at about 15 inches. And this is important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. We do have to do some minor trimming to the fascia and some of the heat shields underneath, but for the most part, this hitch does go up fairly easily, but I would recommend a buddy to help you lift it up there because we do have some fish wires that we're gonna have to pull down through the hitch. I'd say this is something you could probably get done in your driveway in about an hour with some help from a friend. We'll begin our installation here underneath the vehicle. We've got four fasteners here across the back. We're gonna remove with a seven millimeter socket. The zip goes out of there. We'll then switch over to a 10 millimeter socket and on each side of our paneling, we're gonna have two nuts. So we'll get up in there and remove those. So we're at the other side of our panel now. This is towards the front of the vehicle. There's two push pins there. We're gonna remove those by taking our trim tool and putting it in between the little got a little gap or a groove there that you can fit it in and then we can pop out the center of the push pin and then pull the entire thing out of there we'll do that with the other one here as well and once we get both of these push pins out we'll be able to pull our panel down so be prepared because it may want to start to fall it's not very heavy so you'll drop it down and then kind of goes towards the front of the vehicle a little bit to release it, and then we can just set it aside. We're not gonna go ahead and put a strap in place because we're gonna be lowering down our exhaust, so we need to support it. So let's see where's a good spot that we can hook it on. We're gonna just find a spot here on our suspension that we can attach it to. There's a pretty good spot right there because there's a hole in that arm that you can drop your hook down into. And then we can pull our strap tight to support the exhaust there. Now we're gonna go ahead and start removing the exhaust uh, on each side of the vehicle, on the outside of the frame, you're gonna have a hanger here towards the back, kind of right above where the tip is there. We're gonna remove the bolt that's going into the side of the frame, holding that hanger in place. We'll use our 10 millimeter socket to do so. The hanger should just pull out like that and just kind of hang there. We'll do the other side the same way. So now in order to further lower down our exhaust, we've got hangers here towards the center that's just behind our rear suspension there and the differential. So we're gonna put a little bit of silicone spray on them. That'll make it a little bit easier to pop them off of there. 
And then we're gonna take our pry bar here and we're just gonna slide it off of there. And try and find a spot where you can hook it, where you can pry. There we go, it's a pretty good spot. And since we've got our strap under there, that'll catch it for us. We'll then do the other side the same way here. All right, so we got both of those popped off of there. Our exhaust is now ready to come down for us some. So we're gonna support it and then grab our strap and just loosen up the strap just a little bit. Looks like we're hanging up on this side just a little. Uh, the side pieces have little hooks on them that can catch. All right, so there we go. We got it drop down plenty far to be able to access the things that we need to. So our hitch is gonna install on the bottom of the frame on each side using some existing weld nuts and some hardware that will feed into the frame. But our heat shield is obstructing some of the holes that we're gonna to need to utilize. So we're gonna pull those down and modify them. To remove our heat shield, we're gonna have three fasteners here in the middle. We'll remove with a 10 millimeter socket or nuts on some studs we're gonna take off of there. After we get those three removed, we're gonna to switch to a seven millimeter socket now. And on the outer edge here of our fascia, you'll have a fastener located there. And then we're probably gonna to need to switch to our ratchet now, because we have another one on the inside edge of the wheel well liner. So here we can see the fastener right here. So you're probably gonna need a ratchet because it is gonna be a little tight with the wheel right there. And we'll get this one removed as well. Now we've got all the fasteners removed, we'll just pull it down. It does have kind of little ears around each of the fasteners that kind of help to guide it on there and hold it up there. So you just have to pull it off of those. And then we can take that down and set it aside. We are gonna modify it and reinstall it. We're gonna remove the other side the same way. It's just kind of a mirror image over on this side. Now on the frame at the very back here, you're gonna have a bolt on each side. We're gonna remove that with a 21 millimeter socket. If we take a look at the back of the panel here, this cover here is held on by the rivets. What you wanna check for is wiring going in the side to see that you actually have the sensor bar. We don't have anything going in this side. We have nothing on this side. It's just plastic. There is no sensor bar there. So we don't need to remove it. So here at the back, this is what we would need to trim out here at the back. Now, if you have, if you see these rivets here, there's a good chance that you probably have the sensor that's located here. You also know if you, uh, if you have the hands-free lift gate opening option, that's what these rivets are holding in place is the sensor bar for the little kick sensor down here. So before we trim this, if you have that option on your vehicle, you wanna move this out of the way. You will get new rivets in your kit, so we're gonna drill out all these rivets so we can pull that sensor off, make our modification to the fascia, and then we'll reinstall it. We're gonna use a 3 16 drill bit to drill these out. Now after you drill out the center, these ones spread really wide, so on the back side, you might need to take some cutters and just trim up a little piece to clean it up. And you may also need to use a trim tool to just pop it out of there because of how wide the ears just tend to spread on these. Even after you draw out the center, they kind of fold over some, which makes them difficult to remove. Now, I was just showing you this for example. We actually don't have the sensor on ours, so we're not going to remove the rest of them. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install one of those, so that way you're familiar with how that works as well. All right, so we're gonna go show you how to reinstall these now. So this is a plastic rivet that comes in the kit. Then you have a plastic rivet gun, slide it in place, push your rivet all the way through, 
and then squeeze the handle. After that, you'll need to let go of the handle, slide it back up, and squeeze it again. And that typically most of the time breaks off the end of it. It's now compressed and reattached. We're gonna go ahead and trim this out now. We're just gonna use our cutoff wheel here to trim that. So now that we've cut out the fascia, we are also gonna remove some of this paneling here. This is the cover where it would cover up your sensor. Um, so you normally you would have to just pull your sensor down out of there and then you could, you probably use some snips to trim this out while you pull it down. We're just gonna probably, actually we'll probably use the snips just to, cause you're not really gonna see this once we cut it out. So we'll trim this out with our snips now and then we'll take a file and clean up all the rough edges cause it does kind of melt the plastic when you use one of these wheels here. So here we got our file. We're just gonna clean this up, knock off all the little burrs and stuff that's on there. And then any marks that we've got left that we had drawn on there for cutting it out, we just wanna clean that all off. All right, and now we got our cutout for our hitch. So now we're gonna go ahead and feed our hardware into the frame. We're gonna use the fish wire that comes in our kit to do so. The coiled end here, we're gonna push through the small opening that's here towards the front of the vehicle. We're gonna feed it back and pull it out the larger opening towards the rear of the vehicle. Sometimes it's helpful to put a couple of small bends, kind of like that in it to help angle it down so you can get to the hole more easily and pull it out. There we go. And then on the opposite end, I like to put a pretty hard bend on it there. And that just prevents the wire from being able to fall through the other direction. Once we've got our coiled end pulled through like that, we can take our spacer here, slide that over the coiled end. You can go ahead and push that up into the frame. Then our carriage bolt will thread onto the coiled end. After we thread that on there, just pass the bolt up into the frame and then pull it back so it comes out the hole. We're now gonna do a similar procedure to that. It's a reverse fish wire for the larger hole that's behind it there. So we're gonna take our coiled wire here, go ahead and place your spacer over the end of the coiled wire, and then take your bolt and thread it onto the coiled wire. Push the bolt up into the frame, push your spacer, up in there and then you can pull the back, uh, bolt back down like this. We're also gonna prepare the opposite side the same way. So now we're gonna trim out our heat shield and go ahead and reinstall it. I like to put the hardware in first so that way we can verify it passes through the heat shield. So we're gonna cut out a hole here to match up with one of the holes in the bottom of the frame. One of them already lines up with an existing hole but the other one towards the front of the vehicle does not. So we're gonna use a two inch hole saw in this location here to clean this up or to cut this out. There we go, we've got our hole cut. And now we're gonna trim just a slit down this here so that way it'll have some flex to it so that way it'll fit properly once we put our hitch up there. So we're just gonna grab our snips and just run a slit just pretty much all the way down until you hit kind of that curve point there. Once we've got them both cut out, we can go ahead and test fit them. And if everything looks good, we can reinstall them. We do wanna make sure we pass our fish wires down through the holes. And then all of our fasteners should kinda of like line back up and push back into place there. And then we can go ahead and reinstall the fasteners that we're holding it on. We can then go back and secure all the fasteners. All right, so we're just about ready to lift our hitch up. Um, this front, or this rearmost bolt right here, when we reinstalled our heat shield, we actually wanna make sure that this one stays off. We're gonna install that after we lift our hitch up. So I, I zipped it on there, we're just gonna zip it back down. 
and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just this one nut. So now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch up over our exhaust. We'll then feed our fish wires through. The rearmost bolt that we fed in will feed into the middle hole, and then the frontmost bolt that we had fed in will feed into the frontmost hole. The rearmost hole in the hitch is gonna use a bolt right into the factory weld nut on the frame. Once we get those fed through, we will need to kind of go in a little bit, pull down on our fascia some, and get to slide up into position there. And we'll push it up till we get our holes to line up with the frame. We're gonna take the bolt, place a flat washer on it and get it threaded into the frame at least a couple of turns there. Once we get one on each side, the hitch will hold itself up and it can get easier to install the rest of our hardware. We can now go ahead and remove our coiled wires. You can just pull them off of there or unthread them. If you unthread them, you can reuse them, which could be useful for other projects or or if you ever want to take this hitch off, the fish wires can be useful to remove them from the frame as well. So we're going to go ahead and put our nut on now. You just want to be careful not to push that bolt up into the frame when threading the nut on there. So we're just trying to be real gentle, kind of resting it on the bottom, get it to catch. And then we can run it down there. And we're just going to repeat that now for the remaining ones. Now that we've got all the hardware installed, we'll just go back with the 19 millimeter socket and run everything down. For the larger bolt, we're still gonna need that larger size socket here. Let's see about our 21. It might even be bigger. Looking like we're gonna need a probably a 24 for that one or a 15 16 is a similar standard equivalent. Once you tighten down all your hardware, we can go back and torque it to the specifications outlined in our instructions. And now at this point, those nuts that we had left off, we can go ahead and put those back on and just run them down. You don't want to run them down too tight because of the way they line up. You will probably bend and break off the studs. So just make sure it's snug on there and you're good to go. We can now reinstall our exhaust. So we're going to use that silicon spray again. And then we can lift it up and slide it in. And actually what I might do first, if we look at the hangers that are on this side, they actually have little hooks on them. It may be easier to actually push this up and push the hook into the little groove there so that way it holds it. We can do the other side. That way the hook's kind of holding all the weight for us. So that way we can just come over here and line these up and push them on. A little bit more spray. Once you got your exhaust back up, don't forget to take your strap back down. We'll now take our under shield and we can put that back into place. You'll want to slide it up in the rear first. And we can lift up the front and we will line this up and reinstall our push pins. And we'll run down all the fasteners for our under panel then next. And that completes our installation of eTrailer's 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Ford Explorer.